So today I'm going to be talking about um, optimizing your Firestorm viewer, setting up a graphic setting um, for your second life, specifically for fighting purposes, uh, for when you're in battles. You can use it in practice, you can use it in jousting, on uh, any other melee combat or other Unity Maxim activities that you do, or any other HUD game that's PvP related in second life. Um, so I think how I'm going to do this is, as I go through, if you have a question or comment, just throw a Q or a C in local chat, and then I will get to you as soon as I am able to. There are several factors that go into the lag that you experience in Second Life, um, specifically when you are fighting. You have lag coming from the computer you're running, you have your internet connection, you have your own personal lag, you have other people's lag, and then you have sim lag. So I'm going to go through um, all the different factors that affect lag and how to minimize it and optimize your performance when you are fighting. Um, my lectures specifically cater towards Firestorm, so if you don't have Firestorm, I apologize. Um, and without further ado, let's just get started here. Um, so first things first, I would like everyone to um, go to Avatar and then Preferences. Open up your Preferences and then go to your Graphics tab. Then once you are there, um, if you already have a graphics setting that you use that is different from the default setting, I don't know if you have it saved already and I don't want to mess you up, so you can actually save it really quick right now. The save button is on the bottom of the general tab and it's next to presets. You can click that and you can give your graphics um, that you're using right now a quick name and hit OK. And that will save what you currently have so you can switch back to it later. The thing that I would like you guys to do, um, we're going to go over the quality and speed uh, performance, the bar, the slider bar way at the top of the general tab in the graphics. And just to clarify as well, if anyone gets lost throughout the lecture, I am recording this right now. I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel as an unlisted video, so if you get lost or if you need it, you can reference this video later. I'll also be handing out the lecture notes at the end of this as well. Um, and I've also got some more helpful links to give out. So quality and speed. Um, first things first, I run mine on medium-low. Now you want to run it somewhere between low and medium. You don't want to go too high and um, experience more lag than you absolutely need. But you don't want to also go too, too low and have everything de-render all wonky. So I run mine on medium low. Um, next thing, we're going to start on the left side first and then work our way around. And I'm going to go through everything and try to break it down. Um, try to demystify some of the things involved in um, the graphics tab. I know my first 10 years in Second Life, I didn't know what any of this stuff meant at all. I would literally slide my graphics down and call it a day. I didn't know what any of it meant. Um, but first thing, on the left-hand side, right below shaders, you have transparent water. Um, and what transparent water does is it just makes your water look nicer and more realistic and prettier, essentially. So I have this unchecked because you don't need to see pretty water. You just need to know that there is water there in a battle. Same thing with bump mapping and shiny. I have that unchecked. That is specifically for making textures in Second Life look nicer and more realistic. You do not need to see nice and realistic textures in Second Life when you're fighting. The same applies for local lights, atmospheric shaders, advanced lighting model, ambient occlusion. These are all things that make your viewer, your game look nicer to have better lighting, better shading on objects. I have everything in shaders unchecked because I don't need to see anything uh, pretty. I don't need to see any details on things. I just need to know that certain objects are there, but they don't need to look high resolution in order to fight in Second Life. Now, a little background, if you disable um, advanced lighting model, this is actually a drastic hit on your quality, so once you turn it off, you should be performing a lot better. Same with the atmospheric shaders, this is an extreme hit on quality. Um, 
and the ambient occlusion is a small gain if you uncheck that as well. You have to think with a minimalist mindset. What do you absolutely need in order to kill somebody in a PvP game in Second Life? Yes, yes, yes. All of that is correct. You need to see some sort of shape of a person. You need to see, preferably their hitbox, especially if they're far away and you're aiming bows. Especially if it's like a dragon, you want to see the hitbox. You need to see their name tag. But other than that, all the details on their avatar, you don't need to see any of it. It doesn't matter what they look like. You just need to be able to know they're there so you can shoot them and kill them. Okay, so I shut my mic off there for a second. So I have shadows disabled. Huge performance gain if you do. Um, you don't need to see shadows when you're fighting. Um, and then water reflections I have set on minimal. And I have point lighting set to reduced. Uh, again, that just makes things look nicer. You don't need to see nice things when you are fighting. Any questions yet up until this point? Okay, so next step. We are going to move right on to the right-hand side of the general tab. We have at the top draw distance. Draw distance varies depending on the situation that you're in. Um, you definitely don't want to be running a higher draw distance than you absolutely need. So you need to think about the different situations that you find yourself in that require certain draw distances. So say that you're in a melee battle and you're in an arena with swords like we did yesterday, I believe. Yes. And you only need to see about 50 meters in front of you, not even. So you could slide it down to 50 meters when you're in that situation. But say you're in a um, battleground, in a big battle, and there's bows. People cross the battleground shooting at you with a bow. You're going to need to slide it up so you can see them. Same applies for um, like the dragons. They fly up super high. They fly up really far away. You're going to want to slide it up so that you can see the dragons. Um, so I would suggest to adjust as needed. Um, you can also make several different graphics presets as well, like one for battles, one for practice, whatever you want, but I typically adjust as needed for certain things. The same applies for um, particle count and complexity. But one more um, trick I wanted to teach before I move on from draw distance is you can actually type in local chat um, a a shortcut key to change your draw distance really quickly. So say you're in a battle and you want to quickly turn your draw distance up for a dragon, you can type lower uh, lowercase d, lowercase d, space, and then let's say 150. Lowercase d, lowercase d, space, 150, enter. Everyone can try this right now. It changes your, your draw distance instantly. Um, okay, so next thing we have particle count, and this is also contingent based on the situation at hand. Um, depending on what kind of situations you're in, whether you not whether or not you need particles, you definitely don't want it on if you don't need it, um, and you do want it on when you do need it. So certain situations that I find myself in, like when I'm in the zombie house, I totally shut particles off. That's just me. They tend to get in the way, especially when we're in that small house. I can't even see anybody. <laughs> so I just totally shut it off. But um, certain situations like a big battleground when there's dragons and there's AoE with the particles and there's mages casting spells. If you don't have particles on, you're going to die. You need it. So it's an adjust as needed type of situation. Jade, anything else you wanted to add? Um, and my next thing, I'm going to be talking about complexity. I want to try to demystify this a little bit. Um, complexity does affect lag, but it's only one factor involving lag. It's not the whole picture. Um, I read on an article recently that most avatars have about 100,000 or less complexity. Um, maybe a little bit higher now since all the mesh stuff came out. Um, currently, right now, I'm running 75,000 complexity, and 
I tend to keep my complexity, maximum complexity, up a little bit higher than probably some other people. I usually have it on like 180,000. Um, and that's because I don't like to go into a fight and have somebody like be a blob <laughs> and not uh, me not be able to see them because they have high complexity. It happens every time. I mean, there's always somebody that has a super high complexity and then I can't see them and I have to turn it up. So I kind of combat that by just turning it up ahead of time. And then Avatar Physics, I have shut off when I'm fighting. It's on zero. That just affects, um, you know, bouncing body parts. Definitely something you don't need to see in battle. You could totally shut it off. And then next up, we have a level of detail, LOD, distance factors. So objects and sculpts, LO, this affects every mesh thing in Second Life. So I have mine currently set on 1.0. It's just enough to be able to see most things all right, but not high enough to cause any more lag than needed. Uh, but I tend to turn mine up when I'm inside the zombie house and the monster house because they de-res on me and get all wonky at my current setting. Um, but other than that, it's usually on 1.0 when I'm fighting. And then the trees, that affects, um, it only affects linden trees. So if there's no linden trees around, having it turned down does not give you a performance gain when there's no trees around. So again, if it's a mesh tree, that would fall under the objects and sculpts LO, not the trees. And then um, avatars, I have pretty low as well. You don't need to see details on avies. I've I've got mine set at 0 0.125. Probably could go even lower, maybe. Um, terrain, 1.0. It doesn't matter details on the ground. You just need to know where the ground is and where you're running. It doesn't matter what it looks like. The same applies for the sky. I have mine turned all the way down on 16 because it doesn't matter what the sky looks like. I'm not even looking up. It's literally right now just a blue color. That's it. I don't see clouds. I don't see particles. No details in the sky whatsoever. It's just a solid blue color. Um, so next thing we have is avatar rendering. Um, and I read on an article, hardware skinning to leave completely alone. Um, usually it's enabled. Um, enabling it should provide a performance boost. This setting is hardware dependent. Your viewer decides at launch if it can or cannot be enabled. So rule of thumb is to just not touch it. I'm not exactly sure what it does, um, but at least I found some information on the internet. Um, and then disable, you can go ahead and disable avatar cloth. That just makes mesh clothing ripple in the wind if your hardware supports it. Definitely not something that you need, so you can go ahead and uncheck it. So next up we have, let's see where I'm at here. Okay, hardware settings. That's the next tab um, next to general on the top of the graphics tab. For this one, um, most of these are more so for photography. Um, I have the anisotropic filtering unchecked. I have the anti-aliasing disabled. That just makes um, edges more crisp, especially for photography. It's not something you need when you're fighting, so it's disabled for me. And then if you slide right over to the rendering tab, which is to the right of hardware settings at the top of the graphics tab, I have under texture rendering, I have restrict maximum texture resolution to 512. I have that checked, um, and I had a friend teach me this. Go ahead. So I have it checked, and I had a friend teach me this, and basically what they told me is that um, when you enter a sim, all of the textures on objects and things in the sim are only going to load at a lower resolution for you. Um, so. The textures will load faster, you'll load faster, your sim's going to load faster, you're going to experience less lag because of this. Oh. 
Okay, so after we got that set up, um, depth of field as well, I don't have enabled. That, as far as I know, that's only used for photography. Uh, it blurs the background uh, behind your avatar for photography. I don't have that enabled either. Um, but after that, um, you can go ahead and save this setting as your fighting setting. So you're going to go back to the general tab um, in the graphics and you're going to go back down to presets and you're going to hit save and you're going to give this graphic setting a name you could name it anything you want as long as you know that it's for your fighting settings you could do like WR fighting or whatever and then um, hit OK um, we can go ahead and take a look at them you can close out of graphics now make sure that it's saved first and hit OK and then close out of your graphics and then once that is done you can turn on and off your graphics setting um, at the top of your Firestorm viewer at the um, on the taskbar it's like a little TV monitor screen it's next to the music button for you know how you toggle when a club DJ is playing music it's right next to the music note if you hover over that that's your graphics presets, so you can switch back and forth between your fighting graphics quickly and your normal graphics setting. Okay, so next up we have the quick preferences. Um, just another way to quickly turn up and down some of the graphics settings based on the situation. Quick preferences for anyone not totally clear. <laughs> <laughs> So after your quick preferences is um, open, as you can see right from here, you can slide up and down your draw distance, your max particles, your LOD factor. You can slide it up and down based on the situation at hand. You can change your wind light from here. Just a really convenient option for changing things as needed. Okay, so another trick that I know um, to quickly de-render other extra stuff that you don't need in a um, battleground or whatever the situation may be is to turn on your advanced menu um, and do something in the advanced menu. So for anyone that doesn't know to turn on your advanced menu it's Control alt d or Control alt shift d for Windows. Mac, it's Option Control d And then once Advanced is open, you want to click it at the top. And you're going to go to Rendering Types. And right from this list, you're going to see a bunch of things here. Trees, you can instantly, if you uncheck it, get rid of um, the linden trees. You could de-render the grass, the particles, the bump, the clouds. You could instantly get rid of all of that stuff to help uh, reduce some of your lag. I wanted to talk about the different ways that you can go about de-rendering extra people in different situations. Um, let's say that you're in a joust, okay, and there's a lot of people there. Let's say it's this big huge joust, everyone's there, there's 20 people in the audience and you can barely move okay you can actually de-render the audience people totally de-render them um, to help your joust to increase your speed and your performance um, decrease lag that way let's say that you're in a uh, big battle and i know usually they started having the viewing platform on like a separate sim but let's just say the viewing platform is on the same sim as you and there's a bunch of people there that aren't even fighting that are watching the fight, you can de-render them. Um, and same with, let's say, um, let's say you're shopping, you know, and there's a, you're, at, you're at a shopping event, so there's, there's 50 people there, and you're there with your one friend, so you don't know anybody, you just want to look at the stuff. Yes, you can go to World, Show Friends Only, don't do it right now, um, and that would get rid of everyone except your friends. It's a great little trick. 
Um, but in order to de-render specific people, okay, so let's go back to the joust thing. You're in a joust, there's 20 people in the audience, you want to de-render them. The quickest way that I know of to do this is you can go to the people tab at the bottom of your Firestorm viewer and you can go to nearby and you can um, you can actually practice this right now with somebody if you want. You can try de-rendering somebody. Let's uh, try de-rendering, um, yeah, we can de-render Merida. So click on Merida, and you can actually select multiple people at once. So you're looking at the audience, you see their names, you can shift click on the nearby, all of the people that you want to de-render, so you can do it all at once, okay? So after you shift click all the names that you want to de-render, you right click one of the names and you go down to de-render on the little box that pops up. Yes, I'm going to explain that right after this. Um, so that would be how you de-render people. You can also click right on their name tag as well um, and do more and do de-render and then do temporary. If you click on their avatar, and you're, you're going to de-render probably either their outfit or their body or something. So definitely make sure that you click on the tag and not their body. Next scenario. Say that you de-rendered somebody and now suddenly they're your opponent and they're invisible and you have 10 seconds to get it sorted out before uh, you fight them. <laughs> it happens. Don't worry. Um, you can easily undo this. And you don't even have to leave the sim or relog or anything. It should work. Sometimes that sounds wonky, but it should work for the most part. Um, so what you do is you can go up to World, and then you go down to um, Asset Blacklist, and then you can actually type in their screen name right in the box. And you know, if you have a long list of de-rendered stuff and it's hard to find them, you can type their name right in the box. And then once you find them, you click on them, and then you click Remove Selected, okay? And then once you do that, you actually have to change your group tag to anything, even if just for like a second. You have to change your group tag. And then once you do that, give it a few seconds, and they'll reload and reappear. Yes, same applies for show friends only, okay? So if you're in a situation where everyone's gone, everyone, you de-rendered everyone, and then sometimes, like, when I teleport to another sim, there's everyone's still de-rendered. Um, doesn't, it should, like, not do that, but it does for, uh, for me a lot. So you can reset show friends only by checking it again under world, and then changing your group tag and that will remove that. All right, so next thing, my last portion of the lecture, I'm gonna be talking about um, your own personal lag. So, so far we talked about sim lag. We talked about other people's lag um, and objects lag and that kind of thing. Um, now I'm gonna be talking about your own personal lag and the things that you can do to try to minimize your own lag to increase performance. So you may have noticed, I do not wear a newbie avatar. I do have a mesh head and a mesh body. Um, that's because I go by like a minimalist principle where I take what I really feel I need and I leave the rest. Um, I really try to go without with everything I don't absolutely need. Um, so right now my mesh body and my mesh head is 13 scripts. and total i'm wearing 42 scripts so the rest of the scripts are all coming from the unity maxim huds and the weapons and all of that everything else i took off this includes game huds this includes um body huds this includes all of the scripts that are in my outfit um so any extra huds that you don't need take off um and another great tip that I highly, highly recommend, yes, AOs, is you can actually build your AO right into the Firestorm viewer. And this will save you between, usually between like 10 and 20 scripts, enough for it to be worth it. 
Um, and it sounds like it would be hard until I did it. And I was like, wow, that's really easy. <laughs> I wish I did that a long time ago. I have a video on it. I did a tutorial on YouTube and I'm going to put the link in local chat for you for anyone that doesn't have this yet. It's essentially you just um, res your HUD on the ground. You take the animations out and then you place the animations in the different folders in your Firestorm AO and it's very clearly listed. Sounds It sounds complicated, but it's really easy and you can do a step-by-step -step guide uh, with my video. Um, so that also applies for any extra jewelry, collars, hair, anything that has scripts in it that you're wearing. Collars are known to have a ton of scripts. You don't need jewelry. You don't need to be coming to White Knights uh, with your bling and all your jewelry. Take it off. Your hair, you can, um, if it's modifiable, you can go into content and delete the um, scripts right in it. This applies for jewelry as well or anything else you're wearing. You can delete the scripts right in it if it's modifiable. And I highly, highly recommend to do that. Um, okay, so other than that, one last trick as well is you can remove your sword sheath. Um, and that has a handful of scripts. You don't need your sword sheath. It's just an aesthetic. You can still draw your sword and hit and swing and fight without wearing the sheath. You do need the bow sheath because you need to click it to do fast practice and long bow, but you can take the sword sheath off. Yes, make sure you make a copy of the hair first in case you want to change the color with the HUD later or whatever, but you can always get it redelivered as well. Um, or you should be able to anyway, depending on the creator. Hopefully you can. But yes, make a copy. And then last but not least, your computer, your internet, your RAM, your graphics card, your streaming, internet radio, your games, your programs, YouTube. That is going to all affect your performance a little bit. Um, so try to have all of your extra programs and don't be streaming anything and that kind of thing when you're in a battle. Um, one last trick that I have is you can close out of extra programs that are hidden, that are running in the background of your computer um, that you're not even using. A lot of stuff like Adobe, Microsoft Office, Steam, Discord, they love to run in the background of your computer at all times, even when you're not even touching it. Um, but if you if you have Windows, I'm not sure on Mac, I'll have to double check on that, but if you have Windows, you can right click on your main taskbar at the bottom and go to Task Manager, and then click More Details at the bottom of that pop-up. And it's going to list under the background processes everything that you're running. So right now I'm running Adobe. I'm not even using Adobe. I'm, I'm running Xbox. I'm going to close out of all this extra stuff that I don't need. Um, and that's a really good thing to do, like right before a big battle. You know, try to close out of the extra stuff you don't need as well. Make sure that your computer has good airflow. Make sure, I, you know, if you have fans in your computer, that's great. Um, I have a fan next to me that I blow right on pointing towards my computer just to give it a little extra airflow to keep it cool so that I can keep my performance running smooth. Um, other than that, uh, if you have any computer-related questions, I know Alistair is really um, good with that stuff. He's really techy, so he's the person to talk to. And I do have a wiki as well that I found about reducing lag for Second Life. That was a little helpful for me. Any, any other thoughts, comments, questions? That's uh, the end of my lecture that I had for you guys.